We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may go right in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord for peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord for salvation. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord for the well-being of the world and for the unity of the church of God. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for this holy house as we offer God our worship and praise. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Almighty God, your Son, who is the truth, the way, and the life, brings holy offense to a world of sinners. Help us to see in this perfect life the great salvation he has for us and our lives, for in our own and chapter, which can be found on page 774 in your pew Bible. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. It sh they say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his art. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said and who prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesied lies? and who prophesied the deceit of their own heart. 
who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks rock in pieces. Here is the first reading. The second reading is from Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and it can be found on page 1196 in your pew Bible. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to fight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy wandering about in deserts and mountains and dens and in caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Here ends the reading. It's time for the children's moment. All right, so I have a bag, and in my bag, I have some stuff that I, I know what this stuff is, but I don't really understand how it all works. So, let's look. The first thing I have in my bag is a CD. I know you guys probably don't even know CDs oh, anymore, but. Oh. I love CDs. Okay, well. I think kids bought one. Yeah, so I have a CD. I don't understand how a CD works, right? I have no idea. All I know is when I take it's the CD the out, the yeah, and you stick it in, and then music just comes out, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how songs are in there. I don't see the songs in there, but I know they're in I'll there. Show you. Okay. So I don't understand how it works. Just like My I don't. Mom and Dad know how it works. They do. Well, I'll have to talk to them. So I don't really know how the songs come out of the CD. Just like sometimes when I'm sad. I don't understand it, but God will put a song in my heart. Even when I'm not really feeling like it, and I'll think about God, and it'll make me want to, like, have a happy song. So I don't really know how he does it, but he knows when I'm sad, and he knows how to make me happier with a song. So the next thing I have is a telephone, right? Oh. Yeah. My so, mommy used to have one, and then let's have flowers. Yeah. So the telephone, we all know you call you dial it up and you can talk and I know that when I talk I can hear somebody's voice in it and they can hear mine but I don't know how it works I don't know how my voice goes through the telephone 
to somebody else's telephone, right? I don't really know how it works. I just know it does Mama work. Mama used to have one of those. She did. Mama used to have a different one. Yeah. You had to take out the bottom yeah. to like call. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. So I don't really know how my how the call goes in the phone and out the phone, and it's kind of like prayer. I don't really understand how prayer works. I just know it works. I know that I can talk to God anytime I want to, right? Anytime I feel like I need to talk to God, I can just go to him in prayer. I don't really know how it works, but I know it works, right? All right, let's see what else I have in here. Hmm. So I have, oh, I have some medicine, all right? I don't really know how medicine works. When you take medicine, how does it know exactly where it needs to go to make you feel better, right? How does it know if you have a headache that it needs to go right here to make your head feel better? Or if you have a tummy ache, how does it need to go, know that you gotta go to your tummy? Like, I don't know how it works, but it knows exactly what you need to feel better. What color is it? That's pink. Just like God. I don't know how he does it, but he can heal all of my hurts. No matter what I'm feeling, no matter how bad I'm hurt, he heals it all of the time. I don't know how he does it, but he always does it. All right, you guys might not know what this is. This is a calculator, right? I don't really know That's how. That's in my dad's office. Yeah, lots of people that have offices use these, right? You type in numbers and it adds the numbers up. I don't really know how it adds all the numbers up, but it does. It gives us an answer. My dad can work it out yeah. and he can make it call somebody. He can make it work. Guess what, God can make it work too. God answers all our prayers. Just like this calculator will give you answers, God will give you answers. Got two more things, you ready? What about this? This is a flashlight. It's pretty simple, right? You mash the button, my flashlight's not working, but you mash the button and the light comes out. Well, it's just like God. He is our light my in our dad darkest has days. One of those yeah, everybody's got a flashlight. They're good for us to see in the dark. And then finally, my favorite thing is a what? A remote control, right? You just point this remote control to the TV and you can change your channel, right? Or get whatever you want to watch on TV. It's, yeah, it's like amazing. It's like you just point it and it just happens. How does it happen? I don't know. Just like, how does God sit put, up and you put a movie? Yeah. You have to push a button and you like watch a show. Yeah, guess what? It's just like that with God. It's just like that with God. He sits He sits in heaven and he's able to control everything here on earth. So he's like he's got a big remote control. I don't really know how it works. I just know he does it. So all of these things remind me of how God can work in our life. All right, so let's say a quick little prayer. Are you ready? So I need you to say it after me. You ready? All right, so thank you, God, that I don't have to understand your ways. I only have to know that you are in control. Amen. All right, I hope you guys have a great week. And you can see Clara for your bulletin. You can like like Disney, Fox, Wonder Brothers. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Disney. You like Disney? I do like Disney. Yes, it's my favorite. You want a bulletin, buddy? taken from St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus says, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with 
and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two <clears throat> and two against three. There will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. <clears throat> So let me start with this gospel text. Um, the Prince of Peace says he's not come to bring peace, but to create division, right? Uh, to cast fire on the earth, as he so pithily puts it. His power of division is so strong that it will even divide the close-knit family unit, two against three and three against two. He then works that work of division by calling to the crowd who's surrounding him, hypocrites. Does this line up with your mental picture of Jesus? You know, because of his miracles and his healings, Jesus had become rather popular among people. They were gathering around him. They were following him around. And his popularity for a time, we know, was rising. In fact, in John's gospel, after he fed uh, one of the large crowds, they wanted to go make him king, right? So that's part of what's behind this text. He's kind of at the height of his popularity. It's growing, and he sees it, and he knows it. And popularity can be intoxicating, an intoxicating delusion. Did you know in Hollywood you can literally rent a crowd? Or you can rent jewelry to go walk on the red carpet and the jewelry may be worth half a million dollars, that kind of stuff. You can rent the big limos. Because popularity means everything. On social media, you can buy followers by the thousands, and you can buy likes for your social media app, and that skews your numbers, right? And you become, therefore, more popular and become known as an influencer. Wow, that's pretty heady to think that you can be an influencer in the world. You know, we can do all kinds of things to make people like us more. And often, in the end, people do all kinds of things to, uh, and I'm being cynical here, part people of their money, right? That's what we influence them for, for the most part, in the world. And you remember in the wilderness when the devil told Jesus he would give him all the kingdoms and all their wealth if he would just bow down and worship him? He was pitching popularity to Jesus at that time, who now in his ministry is beginning to see his popularity rise. So I have no doubt that in Jesus' mind, he sees it all as the devil's work. So more is going on here than Jesus just playing the prophet's role, being a truth teller, calling sinners out on their sin. I believe what's going on here is there is a um, kind of a demonic temptation pressing against his soul. And so what I believe what's going on here also then is that the sharp knife of God's cross, which was his purpose for which he came, is cleaving his soul as well. Popularity or the cross? 
popularity and all that comes with it, or that thing? Wow. So he says, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. It's on his mind. In fact, it's his very purpose. So looking out at the crowd and contemplating the popularity of his ministry, we hear Jesus rejecting that temptation and aligning himself with the will of God in our rather unusual text today. His mission was not to gain all the kingdoms and their wealth, but to become the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And his mission was not to live large in life, but to confront the powers of evil with the claims of God, which, of course, he was doing. And his mission was not to seek his own comfort and ease, but to do battle against sin, no matter the cost. You know, when I read a text like this, I am reminded that Jesus was God's faithful, willing servant. And faithful and willing in a way that I can never seem to achieve in my own life. And I suspect you probably have a hard time achieving in your own life. His desire to do God's will always led to actually doing God's will, right? He desired it, and then he actually did it. Every step and every moment of his journey to the cross. Jesus was not only to, willing to do what he knew God wanted him to do, but he was able, by an act of his will, to do it again and again and again. So he is, standing right here before us, the willing and the able servant that our lesson in Hebrews told us to put our eyes upon and to be like him. The devil, the world, and all its popularity could not short circuit that movement from willing to doing, from faith in God to action for God. His decision from eternity to bear the cross for sinner, sinners guided his many decisions in time to be baptized into that cruel Roman death. So he rejected his growing popularity, not because he was a sourpuss, but he did it because of his calling from God. He did it out of God's divine eternal love, and the Bible is awfully clear about it, he did it for you, that cross, for you and me, the willing and able servant. Now, in our readings from Hebrews 11, we've heard about all kinds of people who were willing to trust God with their lives and therefore were able to do great things for God or endure great suffering for God's kingdom in their confession. Either way, they proved themselves to be God's willing and able servants in the world. So again, what about you and me here in the 21st century, right now in America at this time? Are we willing servants? I'm assuming you are, because here you are, people of faith. But are we also able servants, able to live our faith out in real and concrete ways for God? So I went to the dictionary and I looked up the word able. What does it mean to be an able servant? Here's the meaning. Quote, having the power, skill, means, or opportunity to do something. Having the power, skill, means, or opportunity to do something. So are we able servants for God? Now, I mean, I know not everyone can do everything, so that's not what we're talking about here. I can't throw a fastball at 95 miles an hour so I don't play for the Atlanta Braves. Yet all of us have the power of our will to act. 
all of us have the power of our will to act, to make a decision and then do it. God has given that to you, right? And all of us have intelligence to learn skills as we need them. Now again, we don't learn all things, but if we have a certain thing we need to learn, we're intelligent enough for the most part to learn a new skill, right? All of us live in a very wealthy nation, so we usually have the means to get things done. And certainly this congregation and its work for the Lord has been very blessed in that direction. And God's gift of time and community are filled with opportunities for serving others in God's name. So, able means having the power, skill, means, or opportunity. Are you able servants? And I would say absolutely, each in your own way has power, skill, means, or opportunity because you've been given a will and you have intelligence and we're fairly wealthy in this nation and we have opportunities all over the place. This present moment in our culture, as people are breaking away from the church and saying, I don't need that stuff anymore, and people are hanging on no matter all the troubles and headache that it has when you are embedded in a, a real flesh and blood, you know, people type community. It's kind of separating those who say they're willing but aren't able. Those who are willing and able, they hang around and they get to work. So over the next couple of weeks, more information will be coming out about some of the things that we're doing as a congregation, kind of as a review, so everybody sees what do we do at Bible. Sometimes it feels like we don't do anything. That's not true. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. Sometimes we just forget what's going on. And there's some new things going on, and there will be some more new things coming down the road, I'm sure. I know yesterday we, because of some willing and able servants, set up that water slide at the Waldowers, and we had our youth group meeting, and we had 25 people there. And not only did we have some fun, but we began planning a new year for our youth, our middle school and high school youth. And again, that information will work its way through the back office as quickly as possible and get into people's hands so we can see what's going on. So, something new uh, that popped up during the National Youth Gathering, the LCMC, of which we're a member congregation, wants our, their districts and regions to do something on the off year from the National Gathering. So, can you have a National Gathering one year and then some kind of regional gathering for another year? So we've already started working, partnering with Spirit of Joy Lutheran Church in Charlotte, North Carolina to make that thing happen for the sunny south. So something new. Are we able to do that? Yeah, because of all the reasons I mentioned earlier. So I'm really interested to see what God does with that when that gets some traction and moves forward. And of course, we'll be coming back with more information as that starts to grow. But there are other things as well. Evangelism is done with its mission, uh, its rink and mission project. So now we're segueing into something new. We're going to call it the Effingham Local Mission Project. And that's just going to be kind of a permanent part of what evangelism does helps the congregation by bringing you information and opportunities and gathering resources so you can be involved in your local community in a way that the gospel is preached and people are helped. In this case, we've decided this year we're going to do it with Habitat for Humanity, who is just now starting a build of two houses up in the Guyton area. Okay, are we able to do that? Of course we are. Um, and so that kind of thing can 
grow and grow and grow. And of course, uh, I do. I'm interested in creating that list of the things we're already doing and have been doing for a long time so we can see just what kind of willing and able servants we, we truly have been, even though I know the last two years with COVID have been a bust. Or that's what it feels like. But it's not been a bust. God's able servants have been active, and God bless us for being active. Now, I want to close with a um, servant testimony about some people who made themselves willing and able, and just kind of as an example of how God does things, and just to kind of wet our whistle for, gee, what will God do with us as we move forward with our new things? This came from um, the LCMC website. They have a little electronic newsletter, and here's a devotional. Um, Kimberly and Pastor Tom Donnelly from Firmly Rooted Ministries in Oxford, Michigan. I actually met Tom a long time ago in Michigan when I was with Food for the Poor. I just want to read you this real quick and just listen to what God has done. And I believe Tom wrote this. Heavenly Father, you gave Kimberly a dream in early 2020 to open a coffee shop. You were so specific about what it was to look like. You shared that teenagers would treat the space like home, a place, a safe place to gather. You even gave her the name Common Denominator Coffee Plus Community. But after opening in April of 2021, and months of running what appeared to be a failing coffee shop, we grew weary and tired. You gave us the vision that this would be a place where a holy collision between the church and the community would take place, but they weren't coming. It was getting so hard to maintain. We already were working more than a full-time job with the church and with me working with firm, Firmly Rooted Ministries and being the Oxford School Board President, it was all just too much. And so we contemplated shutting the doors. On November 30th, we felt we finally had begun to turn the corner. Our staff was trained enough so we didn't have to be there all day, every day, so we took the afternoon off. While we were eating lunch, we heard sirens and saw emergency vehicles racing past. Suddenly, my cell phone went off. I read the words, active shooter. Almost immediately, parents began to gather at the coffee shop because it's a stone, stone's throw away from the high school and the parking lot where students would gather for safety. The fear and pain were palatable. Feeling numb, Kimberly and I decided that the worst place for kids to be was at home separated from each other, so we posted on our Facebook page that high school students were welcome to come to the coffee shop and have a free drink and a safe place to hang out. We just didn't know what else to do. Hundreds and hundreds of young people began to come. Coaches and their sports teams came. Band directors and the band came. Over the next four weeks, we must have served thousands of people. We witnessed hugging, crying, frustration, and anger. We witnessed students coloring with each other, making friendship bracelets and talking, and not on their phones. It took a bit for us to realize we never understood the purpose of Kimberly's dream, but you did. You knew, didn't you? You knew what was going to happen. You knew how many kids would be hurting and in need of a safe place to begin to, prop, uh, to process and heal. We know that now. You gave us the ability to see you work for weeks. You moved people to donate money so we could continue to offer free drinks. You moved businesses and people to donate supplies that were hard to keep in stock. You brought trauma counselors and comfort dogs. You brought pastors from other churches. We got to see the church and the community collide. We witnessed tears, prayers, hugs, love, faith, and healing. Countless people said, I don't know what it is, but as soon as I walked in here, all I felt was peace. 
that was all you, God. All in a coffee shop. We didn't know. We couldn't see it. But you knew. You not only knew, but you acted. You gave a word to a woman in the community. You told her to come to the coffee shop and talk to Kimberly the following morning, December 1st. Through this woman, you told Kimberly to look around the coffee shop. As Kimberly looked over the ocean of community members, you whispered through the obedient woman, this, this is why I had you to create this coffee shop. You didn't know, but I knew that it had to be here for such a time as this. The joy of being church is not Sunday worship. We need Sunday worship, and it can be a joyful thing. The joy of being church is when we are the church living out our faith in real and concrete ways with people in need. Now, not everything that we do has to be done through the church, but every congregation should have things that it's doing. So I know I'm making a commitment in my own heart and mind to focus more carefully on what it is we're doing and to get that information out to you and then to help fan into flame new ministries. So, for example, Miss Lauren and I have been talking about starting a college-aged ministry with her gifts, not mine, her desire, right? And to see where God will go with that. And there are other things that could be done through the year, and I pray that all of you will begin to pray about this. Father, 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 I don't know, but you know, how do you want to use me as a willing and able servant? What can you do? And every one of us needs to find something to do for the Lord. If not through Bible Lutheran, somewhere in our lives, somewhere in our families, somewhere in the workplace. So, let's watch God be at work through us. And in doing that, we will see some wonderful things, some glorious things, and we'll feel the joy of our salvation. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would so fill us with your Holy Spirit that we would be willing and able servants, O oh Lord, to work for you, to work for Jesus, to be your saints, to be your witnesses in the world. Give us something to do, O oh God, each and every one of us, I pray. Amen. Now we rise and we sing, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, you call us to present ourselves as living sacrifices who will be holy and presentable to you. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to give our every moment and every breath into your loving hands and to be mindful of the calling that you have given us to be witnesses of Jesus and moral lamps shining in an evil world. Lord, in your mercy. God of heaven and earth, bless and guide all students who will be heading off to college in the next several weeks. Help them to grow in the knowledge of their minds and the maturity of their souls. Be Lord and Savior over the lives of Timothy, Joshua, Juliana, Jordan, Kira, Oliver, Logan, Cheyenne, Tommy, Tripp, Carlin, and Amanda. Grant safe travels to these students whenever they travel out to school and back home to us. Lord, in your mercy. Life-giving God, you have brought us together as your people. We thank you for all who are a part of this faith community. Enliven us with an evangelical spirit as we work and play, break bread and serve. Bless the work of our council and committees, our groups and study groups, that as we seek to share your love and the gospel of Jesus Christ with one another in the world, we may be your willing, able, gifted servants. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer for St. Paul Lutheran Seminary, its administrators, especially John Jensen, and its professors and students. Let this be a good year for all who labor to pass on the faith from one generation to another and in great power bountifully provide for the needs and cost of the seminary and its students. Lord, in your mercy, God of all wisdom and might, you alone can rule the world in such a way that our sinful nature and fallen institutions are overcome by the goodness of your justice and the grace of your holy word. We continue to pray for an end to war and the raising up of peacemakers. We pray for hope and healing for victims of war and ask that you sanctify the lives of those who have fallen in battle. Pray a, a place in every human heart, we pray, a sincere love for their neighbor and the highest respect for human life. Lord, in your mercy. Visit and relieve, O Lord, your servants who are ill, for whom we now name before you in our hearts. Comfort them with a sure confidence in your care. Defend them in their danger and keep them in your everlasting peace and safety. Continue to work complete healing in the life of Karen and Dawn and Sandra and Roy and Mary Ann and Sarah and Ann. Continue to work in their time of sorrow and pain or bring comfort in their time of sorrow and pain to the Brady family. Heal Miss Brady of her burns and help them in their time of grief to find comfort in the ministry of your Holy Spirit and through the love of those who surround them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the true prophet who speaks from your Father's eternal kingdom because you came from him and returned to him as the very word of God. 
Help us in this holy meal which you share with us, that testament of forgiveness which you offer us, and that we partake of as we take your body and blood, that we may be cleansed by that word of forgiveness, live in that word of forgiveness, and share that word of forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <clears throat> of me. Then after supper he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Welcome to the Lord's Feast. Taking the body of Christ for you. Lord Jesus, bless you now and forever. The body of Christ for you. This is Christ's body, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body of Christ. The body of Christ for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you. Jesus bless you. The body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you. The body of Christ. This is Christ's body. Given into death for you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Welcome to the Lord's Feast. Take and eat the body of Christ. This is Christ's true body, which was given into death for you for the forgiveness of your sins.
body and blood of our Lord, preserving the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. God, you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.